Today I'm going to show you how to make an animatronic Santa that's almost 7 feet tall. This Santa has a motorized arm that waves and cost about 200 US dollars to make, so join me for the ride. To begin, here's some of the pieces we're going to be using for our Santa build. But to make it easy for everybody, I drew it out on paper and then made it into a PDF format diagram that anyone can download for free. The link is in the bio below. So for the base, we're going to be using plywood that's 3 fourths inch thick and we're going to be cutting it at 25 inches by 30 inches. Now after you cut it, you can paint it black, white, any color you want. It's probably going to be easier if you paint it as soon as you cut it, but you can also do it once you finish building your Santa. Okay, so now we need to attach the flange to the base. We have two of these over here. I'm gonna link them in the description below. So your board should be 30 inches by 25 inches. And these two need to be separated by 14 inches. And you measure from this end right here to this end right here. So we're just measuring like that. To make it easier, you could do four inches from this end to this end right here. Four inches would be there and then four inches would be here and then the center right there 14 inches so half of 25 is 12.5 so simple would be like this and right there we're in the center right here we're not in the center we're in the center right there then we have some three-fourths inch screw three-fourth inch screws we're going to put them right in there For our Santa suit, we're using this right here that we found on Amazon. This is a complete set. It comes with the wig, the belt, everything that you would need for your Santa. This is an extra large, so let's see how it looks. Okay, before we continue, I want to stop right here to tell you a very important step. We need to put on Santa's trousers and faux boots right now. And the reason is, because once this structure is complete, it's going to be a solid PVC skeleton. You're not going to be able to put on his trousers very easily that way. So then, we have also, these are what I call the faux boots because they're not real. You're supposed to wear these with shoes and this goes over your leg, um, or should I say, on your lower leg, and then it makes it look like boots. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use for shoes. I might just go to Goodwill and get some old pair of boots. Uh, I haven't figured that out yet, but by the time this video is over, we'll know. So we slip these on like this. And we slip this one on right there. And then we grab Santa's trousers. Make sure you're putting them the right way. So we're going to keep them down like this while we continue building it. And that way, once we're done, we can put uh, chicken wire mesh, we can put foam, we can put something to give the legs some mass, and then we can simply slip the trousers up, and we're good with that part. So next we're going to put on our 90 degree elbows, just like this. We want to make sure that they're facing inward, just like that. I'm not going to glue this section here, because I want to be able to easily take it out, so I'll probably just do get a screw and drill it through the elbow into the PVC. Next, I'm going to use my PVC cement, and we have our connector pieces right here. These are two inches each. You need two of them. We're going to go right in here. Then we have our seven inch connector piece that goes right in here like that. So let's get started. We're going to use PVC glue for everything else that we're doing right now. There we go. Push it in just like that all the way in like that. You're going to do the same thing to the next one. Some glue in like that. And we're going to push this piece all the way in just like that. And remember, work quickly when you're using PVC cement because it dries really fast. And once it hardens, there's no pulling them apart. So now it's time to connect the hip joints. We're using two T's and then our seven inch connector piece. And you want the single opening 
of these T connectors to be facing up just like that. And once we dry it, make sure everything's flat because we want it to be in this exact angle. So again, we're going to work fast with our PVC cement. Apply some in there, just like that. Grab this piece, and then we're going to force it in, just like that. And then we're going to do the same to the next one. Apply some generous amount, like that. And then we're going to grab it, push it in, and then make sure that it is flat. Okay, so now we're simply going to connect the hip connector like this. And I didn't use glue for this one because, again, I'm simply going to use a screw right here in the back. I'm going to pre-drill a hole, then put a screw in there so that it holds it in place. But if I want to, I can still remove this piece. But just like that, it should be completely flush. You see the T-piece with the 90-degree connector? It should be flush, and that's why we cut it at 2 inches. So that's how we do the hip connector. Next, we're going to attach the torso. These are 20-inch pieces. They go in just like that, just like that. Next, we're going to do the shoulders clavicle area. So I marked it with some marker right over here so we could better see how it's supposed to line up. Because when we, when we get it with the glue, we want it to line up just like this. The single opening, this is for the neck and this is for the torso pieces. So we're going to start with this one here. Apply generous amounts of glue and then push it in there just like that. Okay. See it's lining up. So after a few uh, few seconds it'll get hard. Let's take this one out like that. There we go. Some glue in there. This piece just like that all the way in. Some glue in there just like that. And then just like this. And go in. Just like that. You have to work fast with this. So once you're done, this is what it should look like. This piece is for the neck, the other ones are for the torso, and they almost fit super snug right over here. So then we grab our piece and we put it right in here. Just like that. Again, you can use cement in this part, so, uh, PVC cement, or you can screw a screw right in the back of it so it's easy to remove and then pop out. Okay, so to animate Santa's arm, we're going to have to use a motor. And this one is a motor. A, motor. a motor. Okay, so to animate Santa's arm, we're going to have to use a motor. I'm going to be using a reindeer motor. I'm going to list this in the bio below. There's different types of motors available online, but this one in particular, I've always been fond of using. Um, it's what I use on my cauldron and my witch prop. So I think these are awesome. We're going to be using this, but we need to take some of the pieces apart to jerry-rig it to make it into a waving arm. So I have an opened one here. So this motor spins like this. We don't want the arm to go like this. We want the arm to go like this. So I'm going to show you how to change this up so that it goes from right to left, right to left, left to right. So it does a waving motion. And we're going to break it down really easy so you know exactly what you need to get this motor attached to the Santa. So to start off, we need to remove a couple of things. We need to remove this handle. They have a screw right down here. And you can just unscrew that and this pops right off. We also need to remove two of these. One across from each other. So I'm going to remove this one here and this one here. And the reason we remove both of these is so that we can screw it into the PVC so it's stationary. You can pick these two. I like picking these two. It's at its widest point, but you can definitely choose whichever two on either side you want. Remove the screws, and then we're going to drill two screws into it. I'm using exterior grade screws, but you can use drywall screws, machine uh, screws, whatever type of screws you have that go through this, we'll do it to attach it to the PVC. 
Okay, so now that I've removed both screws, I've inserted two exterior grade screws. Now you could use drywall screws, any other type of screws. These are just the ones I had lying around. So I put one right here, one right here. These are going to attach to the PVC arm once we get to that portion. Then I remove the screw that was on this little arm and then this just pops right off, just like that. Set that aside. And now you have this little metal nub right here with a little hole for the screw right there. And that's what we're gonna use to attach our PVC pieces. So this is what it should look like and we're ready to go to the next step. Okay, for the next step, we need a size 3 fourths of an inch long PVC piece that is size half an inch. So this is half an inch size of PVC cut at a length of 3 fourths of an inch. We're going to get a reducer. This PVC reducer goes from half an inch to 3 fourths of an inch. I'm gonna link all of this in the description below. So this half inch is gonna go right here where the half inch entrance is at. We're gonna use some PVC cement glue to attach it. But before we do that, we need to drill a hole, pre-drill a hole in here so that it'll go like this and we can attach a screw to hold this piece into place. Now this part is a little bit tricky because you wanna make sure that this PVC goes right in there, but that doesn't touch the PVC, so it doesn't give it a little bit of resistance. So you just wanna be a little bit above from the, from the motor. Then you wanna drill a pre-drill a hole into this so that we can put a screw to attach it to this one over here. Now I bought these machine screws that we have right here, and these are number four, and these are an inch and a quarter long, right here, an inch and a quarter long, and they're number four dash 40, and these are the ones that we're gonna put into this, okay? So let's start pre-drilling really quickly. Okay, and now it goes in just like that. So what we wanna see is if it goes through the PVC and into this little hole right there. I'll put it in slightly like this. And I go like that, and it goes right through. So, see if you can see it. As you can see inside there, hopefully, you see it that it goes right through. So now we need to drill a hole on the opposite side so that this screw goes right through it, and then we can put a nut at the other side to secure it into place. I'm just going to see where the other hole is going to come out of right there and I'm just eyeballing it if you just you can look inside to see where the where the screw is going to come out of I'm going to do another hole on that side make sure it goes through yeah it goes through Okay, so now we're gonna start all over again. We're gonna put our screw in, we're gonna go through the hole. Then it's gonna come out on the other side. I'm just gonna screw it all the way in like that. Got our nut right there and we're gonna put it in there. Okay, so now what we have here is this piece of PVC that's attached to the motor. And it's gonna be wiggly like this, but it's fine. We just need to be able to attach it. And now that we're done with that, we can attach this um, reducer to this one with PVC cement. So let's get to it. So we had to go to Lowe's to try to get a different type of screw because the one that I'm showing in the video, it's a little bit loose and I wanted to be tighter. They didn't have it. I asked for help, I looked everywhere, they didn't have it. So we're gonna improvise with something different. Let's go back home and show you what I'm doing. So to improvise, I have used some painter's tape to just put it like that so that once I put the hot glue inside, it doesn't go all the way down here. So just slipped it under there like that and just like this. So I've got my hot glue. So we're gonna do like this. We want this piece to be just straight up like this. Got it, we don't want it to be side like that so I'm just gonna hold it up like this 
and then in there I'm gonna pour some hot a little bit of hot glue just gonna put a little bit of hot glue so that it can start drying so just a little bit at a time and then we're gonna put a little bit at a time so it can continue drying we're gonna keep it in this upright position like that and let's see how this turns out so as you can see it's been filled up completely with hot glue you know, we're just waiting for it to dry see if that can help mitigate the wobbliness of the PVC now it's time to attach the reducer so all we're gonna do this is the motor right here we're just gonna put it like this facing up we've got our PVC glue and remember we have to have to move fast with this unfortunately this only takes a few seconds to dry so it's imperative that once you put it in you push it in as far as possible and then let it go so we're gonna go like this we're gonna go there we go ah, pushed it in as far as we could go just like that and as you can see mine isn't mine isn't straight up but that doesn't matter because once we plug it in let me show you what happens see it's gonna turn but what we want this to do is we want it to stop over here. So when it comes over here, we want it to stop and then it's going to turn in the opposite direction. And we want it to stop here and go back and forth. So that's what we're going to do. And let's see how it turns out. Okay, we've reached the part where I feel is the most complicated of the entire project. We need to attach the arm and the motor. So I have here the PVC pipe that I cut and the 45 degree angle connector that we're going to use. We've already inserted our 2 inch PVC and this one goes in just like that. Since this is the arm, I would suggest pre-drilling a hole and putting a screw in there so that you could remove the arm if you need to. Because if you do it with cement, it's stuck there. If you need to move the angle, you're not going to be able to. So drill a screw in the back of this, attaching it to the PVC inside so it doesn't move. Okay, so now to the complicated part. The reindeer motor goes in a continuous loop. We need this to go back and forth to do the waving side. The issue is the only way to do that is to stop the motor from going to the right and from going to the left. So we have to obstruct it with something. We're here in the elbow region. This is a very difficult region to be in. There's not a lot of room to move. And once you hide it, it's going to be very bulky. So we're already dealing with issues with that. So we're doing the best we can. I'm going to install the Ranger motor right here. I'm going to have to put a screw. I'm going to have to put a strap. Jerry-rig it to make it go like this and then like this. I'm going to show you all that. It took me a minute to actually figure this out. I was really frustrated because I couldn't get it to stop going this way. Finally figure something else out and hopefully it helps you. If anybody knows of a better way to make this motion, let me know. I'm pretty sure that there's motors out there that can stop in a certain direction, but I went with a $15 motor and this is what we have. So let's get into it. Let me show you how I did it. Okay. So remember we already put these screws inside here. Now we're going to attach it to the PVC arm. You need to be careful though, if you haven't attached this, this might fall. So I would suggest screwing a screw right in, in there right now so that this doesn't fall on you. That's so as you can see here, I drilled one screw there and I'm about to drill the second one so that this attaches to this and this one attaches to the internal piece. That way, if you need to remove the arm for whatever reason, you can just unscrew it and move it. Okay, so we already pre-drilled our screws in here before. So now we're going to attach it like this. Remember this part, it's going up, but if it's in the wrong angle, you can simply turn it. So here's where it gets interesting. So pre-drill holes, you wanna do it almost at the end right here. I'm about a quarter of an inch from the edge. 
and then do another hole right where the other screw is going to go. And then once you pre-drill it like that, then you can put them in like this and then screw them in. And you don't even have to go in all the way. See, just like that and it's attached. So let me show you closer what it looks like. So the rest of the arm consists of a 13 and a half inch long PVC pipe that's size inch. This is gonna go right in here just like that. And we got it. This part over here doesn't need to be cemented or drilled in because it's only gonna go in a back and forth motion. So it's pretty good just keeping it like that. So now's where it gets tricky and fun at the same time. So let me show you real quick what I mean by a continuous motion unless obstructed. This is the motor connected. And unless something stops it, it's just going to go in that same direction. If you unplug it, it'll switch directions, but we're not gonna be unplugging it every two seconds. So this is how we work around that. So since we want the motor to stop like this and go in this direction, so it's like a wave, we need to put an obstruction right over here. So what I figured out is this is a four inch screw. I'm going to pre-drill a hole, which I've already done right here, and then insert the screw so that it stops at the angle that I want it to stop. So I want the wave only to go this far, bam, that's where I'm gonna put the screw. If I wanted the wave to go like this, I would put the screw higher over here. So you basically just have to figure out how much you want it to wave. Remember though, it's gonna be wearing the jacket and it's gonna have some kind of stuffing on the inside. So you don't wanna to go too far like this. So we're going to do it in a way that's simple, like that, perfect, just like this. So I have my four inch screw right here. I pre-drilled a hole, ink out my drill, put it in the position I want, just like that. Perfect. Just like that. So when it comes here, it should stop right there. Okay, so the next issue we have here is that this one wants to just keep going all the way around over here. And we don't have anything really to grab onto this, so a four inch screw won't work here. So I got a stub out bracket. This bracket isn't bent like this, I bent it right now, but they come in 12 to 18 inch um, sizes. So I got the 18 inch one and just cut it in half. Just bent it back and forth, cuts really easily. Then I got this one over here and then I'm just starting to bend it like this so that I can get it to go around like this. And I'll show you closer up. So what I want to do is put it in a position so that when this comes here, it hits the bracket and it has no other option but to go back. So let's see how that works. So I just bent it a little like this. I have my screws. And I only want this to come out a little bit more than the PVC. You don't want it to come out like this because the clothing is going to be on top of this. And I actually don't know how this is gonna look once we put the clothing on. So I'm gonna do it like that, right here. Screw right there. Perfect. So this should stop right over here. Let's see if it actually does. Let's give it a go. And just like that. So if this wave, this wave seems to be coming a little further down, I might adjust this once it goes up. And the simple way to adjust it is just to bend it upwards like this. There we go. But since this is poking out a lot, I'm probably just going to bend it further this way so that it doesn't protrude a lot because as you can see, it's really bulky right here at the elbow. So I'm gonna hope that once we put the Santa jacket on, it's gonna look much better. Um, I might even cut this because it might be a bit too long, but this is essentially what you wanna do. Now let me bring you closer up so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see right there, the screw on the right stops it and the stub out bracket on the left stops it. Just like that. So I might decide to bend, like I said, bend this one inward 
I might even um, cut it more so it's not so long. You just want to find something. It doesn't even have to be a sub out bracket. You can find something that stops the movement from going all the way around, then you're set. I try to put a screw in here. It wasn't long enough, but had I had a five or six inch screw, I could have used that right in here instead to stop it. But I only had up to four inches. So thankfully I had this stub out bracket. I bent it like this, you see, just like that. And that's how I'm getting it to stop. So now that we've gotten the motor to work, you wanna put a pool noodle over this one. So you just remove this, because remember we haven't glued this piece together here and put a pool noodle, just a regular size pool noodle, cut it about this height, leaving just about an inch on this side and an inch on this side, pretty basic. Now we're gonna put on his jacket. So once you put on the jacket, you'll see it's gonna look like nothing, like Santa. So this is when we have to start putting stuffing, materials. You want, might wanna put a beach ball. We have a, a packing bubbles in here. We have pool noodles as well. We're gonna get creative in order to give Santa more of a body. So let me show you how I'm going to put on his jacket. Okay, so now that we put on the jacket, this arm here doesn't have an arm. Super easy to fix. We want to have the jacket on top before we put on the PVC. So we roll it up just like this and we keep it there. Now we can install the arm. For the non-waving arm, this is the arm without the motor, we're using a 45 degree angle that we used with a screw along with a 60 degree angle and we could either use PVC cement or a screw over here but this way we can remove this when it's time to take it down. Okay before we start working on the torso and the arms we're going to start filling out Santa's legs. I have pool noodles here these are regular sized pool noodles you can find them at the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart. Um, and we're going to start attaching them to his leg to try to give him bigger legs. So I have zip ties right here. We're just gonna start zip tying it. I'm using the entire pool noodle, going all the way up like that, going down like that. And remember we have these boot covers over here. I'm gonna put it right in there inside the boot. The awesome thing about pool noodles is that you can just cut them if they, uh, they don't work out. It's super easy to cut. There we go, we got this one, hold it in place. There we go. This one over here isn't gonna go all the way into the boot because it doesn't fit. So we'll just put it right there. If anything, we can cut it later if we need to shave it off. This one I'm gonna use two zip ties so that I can hold more things. That. We can cut off these ends right here of the zip ties and we'll continue doing it, putting um, these pool noodles until we get a semblance of legs on this Santa. And so I realized I wasn't filming while I was showing this part. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm grabbing regular size pool noodle. I'm wrapping it around the body and overlapping on the other side like this. Then grabbing a zip tie, putting it like this and zipping it like that. I'm trying to give him his torso slash stomach. So it's just like that. I come around here and there we go. So we keep on putting these rings on like that and start building up his torso. So once we get to this part, you're gonna see that there's kind of indentations and lines where the pool noodles are. So let me show you that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get duct tape from the very top, I'm gonna to start uh, putting uh, strips downward. So hopefully that flattens the surface so that we don't have to see these kinds of indentation and grooves into that.
Okay, so as we continue, you see we have a few problem areas. Like right over here, you can see this pool noodle and the shoulders need to be filled in more. This arm is where the motor is, so this is gonna be a challenge to continue filling it up. But as you're looking around, you start looking at places you could use a little bit more filling. Before we can finish attaching his head and his boots, we need to deal with his back. Now I know this looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame, but there's a method to the madness and let me show you how we're gonna fix this. So the issue is that when we wrap the pool noodles around Santa and they crossed at the end, it created this. Now we could cut off the excess pool noodle, but then we'd be still left with these pieces like you can see right here. So the simple fix for this is to put something on top of it to look like a Santa sack. So I have this green flannel blanket that I found online and it's just perfect. So what I can do is put it up here like this, tie up the top with some golden cord and like that it covers Santa. If you're in a place that I don't know, it might be too windy or people might pull it up like this. We could use sticky back, attach it to here and then attach some sticky back here and then essentially stick it to it like that. You could also use Velcro and some um, fabric glue to attach it together. Because I'm placing the Santa in a place that people won't be able to look at the back really, this will be more than fine. I'll attach it to the top right here, I'll put the cord on it and I maybe even put a few toys on the top to make it look like it's a, a full of gifts, but that way you cover everything and nobody can really see that he has all these <laughs> pool noodles sticking out in the back. So I've attached the blanket to the top neck area with a zip tie. And now I'm going to get the bottom portion of it, just like this, and then tie it up with another zip tie up there so that we have somewhat of a you know, sack going on over here. So once I tie it up here with the uh, golden cord that I have, I could fill this in with some stuffing, some newspaper, some plastic bags, um, just to give it a little bit more uh, filling to it. And that way it looks like an actual sack. And this way we're covering the back, it looks much better, and let's continue. And now that we're finished, this is what it should look like. We just have to cut a few ends of the zip ties there, but it looks like a sack. It's time for the easiest part of this entire project, putting Santa's head on. Now they don't sell this entire ensemble like this already made, so all of these pieces are individually bought. The Santa hat, the glasses, the mannequin head, really nice, and the beard and the wig. I wanted to say thank you to my friend Denny Walter in Canada for giving me all these ideas and he really helped me out throughout this process. So you can always count on the Canadians to be there for you. So thank you so much. Let's put this bad boy on top of our Santa. So putting Santa's head on is super simple. It has a hole on the bottom just like this. We have our PVC pipe. Stuff it in just like that. And then it goes right up in here. Just like that. So since this PVC pipe is much smaller than the PVC pipe we used over here. We used, you know, these big pieces. I just put a piece of a pool noodle right in there to give it a little bit more cushion to make it tighter. And just like that, we're ready to go. So again, this is just resting in there just like that. See, just like that. And we turn them around like this. You could uh, put some glue in there if you wanted to. I don't want any glue in there so I can remove the head really easy, but it's up to you. For the hands, we're using these oven mittens, just like that. So I haven't attached them yet, but I'm probably going to use either some Gorilla Glue tape, um, maybe some expanding foam because the arm comes off, just something to hold this in place just like that. Originally, I was going to make some type of shoes over here. I even got some old jeans, uh, cut them up and I was trying to make some shoes. It doesn't look right. And then I was gonna get some old boots, didn't look right either. So instead of making any type of boot over here, I'm gonna cover it with this Buffalo Snow. So I just got this at Walmart. But once I set him up, I can just cover him with snow just like this and make it look really nice. And that's what we're gonna do.